why is a neuroscience approach basically the last approach that doctors are willing to take? I can think of so many reasons why the neuroscience approach is the last approach that doctors are willing to take, but the top two reasons why are healthcare insurance and medical school education. So when it comes to insurance, even the most caring doctors still need to make money. What insurance will pay for is going to heavily influence the care that doctors will provide. Think about it. What makes doctors the most money and takes up the least amount of time? Things like surgery, other minimally invasive procedures, injections, prescription medication, things like that. Those things are going to be prioritized in the healthcare industry. And neuroscience-based care is extremely time-consuming. I used to work for a doctor who would book four patients in every 15 minute time chunk, which means that he had less than four minutes per patient. Doctors do not have time to do patient education and talk about the neuroscience-based approaches. And if they don't have time, well then why don't they refer to a pain specialist? Pain management clinics claim to be the pain experts, but almost all pain management clinics are still using structural or mechanical-based treatment approaches and they're not using a neuroscience-based approach. There are pain specialists in the physical therapy world. In fact, you're looking at one. But here's the thing, in order for us as physical therapists to bill insurance, we need codes that we can use. There are no codes that I can use to bill for the services that I provide in my program. There is a way to do it, but if an insurance company came back and did an audit, they could come back and say that the services that I provided did not match the description for the code that I used. So they could decide not to reimburse me, even if I had already provided the services. So as a provider, do I take that risk or do I provide the same stretches and exercises that I'm guaranteed to get reimbursed for? This is a huge reason why many physical therapists are afraid to provide neuroscience-based care and in fact are disincentivized to do so by insurance companies. Chronic pain education is not required in medical school curriculum. Most schools on average have maybe one hour of chronic pain education for medical students. Even if you did learn chronic pain neuroscience when you were in medical school, most doctors then go on to the clinic and do their clinical rotations and learn from older doctors who may have biased opinions and probably haven't been educated in pain neuroscience. Doctors are taught to think in algorithms. In order to understand pain neuroscience, you need to be able to think emergently. We used to think that pain was a linear process, A equals B, but pain is not a linear process. It's an emergent process and it looks much more like this. The fourth reason I can think of is because chronic pain tends to be primarily a female issue and is often written off as a mental health issue. Which brings me to number five, there's very limited funding and there's very limited research for chronic pain conditions. Chronic pain conditions are not life-threatening conditions, so there's no money spent on them. The sixth reason I can think of is because it's an invisible illness. There are no ways to test for it. You can't run a test, a blood test, an MRI scan to test for a nervous system hypersensitivity problem. And number seven, doctors are very heavily influenced by insurance companies, their hospital or clinic policies and procedures, and their practice act. So if there's no incentive to change to a neuroscience-based approach, then it's not happening. I'm Melissa Wolf, a chronic pain specialist, and I'm here to help those who are fed up and frustrated with chronic pain retrain their nervous system. Learn more about my programs on my website and be sure to hit subscribe.